to the Grim Chronicles. I forget which number it is. Ten? Nine? I am the Grim Reader, and this is my weekly reading chat about what I've been reading uh, and some other stuff. So I have been continuing with my two chunkers, mammoths, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so I sort of am participating in March of the Mammoths. It's just that I feel like I'm cheating a little bit since I started this. I think I started this in January, and I'm... I'm moving along slowly. I'm on page 360 something and so I still have a good number of hundreds of pages to go and it's an amazing novel that I never really talked that much about it because I sort of think well I can always you know there'll be a wrap up at the end. Um, right now we're in, a, we're in a section where the intersection of the ad speak so the sort of Mad Men-esque talk about what's on the radio from the 50s, I guess, is intersecting with the stuff about saints in in wacky ways. I would say the section I'm reading right now is sort of wackier. Um, and it's so in that sense, but when I say wacky, it's sort of like funny almost. There's, there's a slapstick uh, part here too, which is, and some of the names are hilarious. They just, someone's reading a dog magazine and the dog is called, <laughs> Champion Dictator von Ehrbruch, and Ehrbruch in German means adul adultery or adult. Yeah, Ehrbruch is adultery. So, and and then there's a lot of punny stuff with female dogs, which you know, uh, yeah. So, so it's kind of funny. This one, it, the, but it is a dark sort of almost. It's not really satire though, because it's 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 a the overall theme is sort of forgery and fake and faking it and so there's a seriousness to that theme that undercuts this humor although although i was still kind of i went back to, i was thinking about how i once said it, the drone eyes view of the city and the people that still kind of applies which is which is also sort of interesting yeah so my thoughts are still incoherent <laughs> as you can see but it is an amazing novel really really well written of its time, you know, I mean, so there are people who might even be offended with some of the stuff in here, but uh, I will, you know, point you all to Jason's amazing little video that he just made and that I just just completely agree with any form of censorship I'm I'm wary of. Um, and he, he uh, kind of summed up my thoughts on it really well. And, and I hadn't really what's the word i hadn't really thought about my thoughts that much and so i'm grateful that he kind of expressed how i feel about these things uh anyway but i didn't really want to spend too much time on that so that's gaddis and then we have anna karenina which is also going i've kind of put it on a slight back burner to recognitions because it's i mean it's a joke but this is like my easy read because <laughs> it's just more traditional than recognitions we just had this amazing scene that I thought was really quite moving with at the races. If you guys, are, anyone who's read, who's read Anna Karenina, there's the scene at the races where Vonsi's in the race. And oh my gosh, whoa. That's just, it was just very, very, it was really well done. Really exciting. And um, yeah. So those are my two, two chunky ones. And so I know that a couple of weeks ago I talked about Moomin comics and I have put them aside. I will come back to Moomin, but it's just, it just didn't, I didn't pick it up uh, since then. So I hate when I, you know how the whole, it's not even DNFing, it's just not getting around to it. So it's still there and I'm not DNFing it for sure because I did kind of like it, but I think I need to be less busy or less full of other stuff to, to commit to it. But uh, in the meantime, so this is something that was recommended to me to by one of my viewers and commenters, Deborah or Debbie Baker. And it's a book that takes place in Berlin in the in the sort of Weimar, Weimar Berlin. So if you've seen the TV show Babylon Berlin, which is also based on books, I think. And in my non-expert opinion, only the first season is good. The other seasons are less good. The second season is not good at all and the third is a little bit better but the first is the only good one in my opinion but it does have that feel of weimar so this is an american person i don't know he must know stuff about german he must have done his research you know which is not that hard to do it's not that esoteric but it's i do like the 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 drawings and they're kind of 
I don't, I'm not a, I'm so not an expert on dark drawings, but they're sort of minimalistic. And, uh, and I also like how those, the, the characters are being, the two main characters, I'm really just at the beginning, but we have this one woman and who, who's an artist who meets this journalist guy and, uh, and they're going to have adventures, I think, of a sort. And, um, yeah, I'm glad she recommended it to me. It's always interesting to read, you know, um, takes on a city I know so well. It's my favorite city in the world, probably, Berlin. Been through a lot. Um, so that's that. And uh, the only book I finished this week is my audiobook, and that is chap book volume nine of Treason's Harbor by, um, what's his name? Patrick O'Brien. So it's chap it's the, the ninth volume of these 20 um, novels devoted to Captain Jack Aubrey. What do they call him? What's his nickname? Lucky Jack. Lucky Jack Aubrey. And his his beloved, in my opinion, is about it's a love story between him and Stephen Maturin, the wacky eccentric sort of naturalist and insect and, and animal taker aparter and collector. And I enjoyed it, but I think I'm slowly over the series. That doesn't mean I won't come back to it, but I need to give myself a bit longer of a break because it seemed it's starting finally to get a little bit repetitive, a little bit like, oh, this is this happening, this is this happening, this is the boat, this is Jack, this is Stephen, this is it's a, it's getting a little bit formulaic, and I wonder if it's because it's just slightly less written or if it's just oh being over familiar with series uh, with the series, and so I was a little bit less knocked off my socks than I have been. And it's not the one, so the one before the last one, I really didn't like that as much because I didn't like one character. And that's not the case. This is this was better than that one. Um, one thing I would say is that this is a Jack-centric one as opposed to a Stephen-centric one. So that might be part of it. But I really think it's just me being a little bit up to here with Jack Aubrey. So what I'm going to do to remedy that is just not pick them up. I mean, I've only been listening to them, but to, to give myself a longer break and then come back to Jack Aubrey and and this the series. Uh, and I do know, I remember reading somewhere that, so the beginning, he sort of raced through time. So there were the, through the Napoleonic Wars. And now because it was po popular, he's sort of diving into the, there's, they're in this timeless realm of, they don't take, they don't cover a lot of ground time-wise. And that might be Maybe there's this aspect of it treading water kind of going on. I don't quite know what what the explanation is, but I think it's just. And so I was thinking about series and long book series and how do people get sick of them? Or I mean, in some cases, I'm sure the books get better. And so which brings me to the last thing I want to chat about, which is my outward, outward facing academic project, so to speak. Uh, and it's connected to my new read which will come as a bit of a surprise to some of you because it's fantasy and um it shouldn't really because i mean at some point so short digression here because i haven't talked much about the fact that my mother was a fantasy and science fiction writer um not that well known but somewhat known and she wrote under the pseudonym cherry wilder and she wrote a fantasy trilogy and then she wrote the first and so on of, of the second part of the trilogy but then she, she got sick and passed away but um so I'm used to fantasy from having lived with someone writing fantasy novels. And also, I mean, I've, I've, I, I did love Lord of the Rings back in the day. I haven't reread really it in a very long time. So that was my entry into fantasy. And so um, my outward facing academic, uh, okay, back up here. Let me tell you the book that I'm reading. So the, I started the first Stephen Erickson novel. I think it's also quite long as an audiobook but I'm pretty good sure I'm going to get the book book too because it's sort of so it's a very very what's the word there's a lot of word world building and quite well done or quite intricate complicated world building and it's the Malazan Empire and the first book in that is it's the book of the fallen 10 book series there are other ones and it's called gardens gardens of the moon or gardens of the moon I think gardens of the moon I'll put a little picture right here and I'm impressed with the writing. I'm overwhelmed with the stuff that's happening. And part of the reason is that it's a war situation. So there's a lot of death and despair and destruction going on. And you're kind of thrown into the thick of it. 
but I'm also kind of intrigued by the characters. It's holding my interest. I mean, back in the day, so and by that I mean the early 2000s, I read a couple of the volumes of The Wheel of Time, so Robert Jordan, and I think this is better than that. I, I, I did struggle through a couple of them, and I thought they were okay. I don't know why I forced myself to read some of them. I think part of it was that Bill was reading them, and he seemed to really enjoy them. I don't think they were that great. I mean, they were okay. But I only got to about one, two, or three. I mean, I read one, two, a couple. I didn't read all of them. I stopped. But this is better, I think. And I'm really enjoying it. And I discovered Fantasy Tube, like Fantasy Book Tube. Oh my gosh, there's so many channels devoted to specifically the Malazan Empire. And this is my outward facing academic of this week. Is His name is Philip Chase. And he is such a personable booktuber. And he's an English professor. He's very sort of like the, the consummate English professor. He's always wearing Tweety jackets and he's got a nice beard. But he's, he's I think he teaches like Beowulf, so old English. And I actually do know of one professor at, at Harvard who was a big fan of my mother's works. And he's also an old, like old time, like middle medieval stuff. And so uh, English professors of medieval English who like fantasies is, is there are more than, you know, there's some out there. So Philip Chase is his name, and I think his booktube channel is just Philip Chase. And he's got, a, he's got you know, quite a few followers, and and he's part of the whole... Uh, there are lots of other fantasy booktubers, and I would like to know if anyone watching this one, if you ever watch these other people. And I just watched Heidi, my Estonian booktuber, and she's reading another fantasy series. There's a read-along that I didn't even know about. I mean, there's so many read-alongs that I'm, I'm not even, I, you know, I can't even keep up and that's okay. But I am, and so I wanted, I was sort of, at the end here, I wanted to chat a little bit about, there's something very, very addictive, but it, it's okay, it's a pretty healthy addiction, about fantasy, about fantasy worlds, about entering into a whole other world that's extremely well thought out. And I've got a snippet of an interview, a booktuber interviewing Steven Erickson, and he said something about, he was, <laughs> the first question was, uh, give us a short synopsis of your 10 volume, uh, you know, works. And he said something like, it's being like dropped into a history. So dropped into a history of somewhere else. And, and the key is of somewhere else. And another thought I had, and I don't know, I have to think more about this, but it's as if when you know who was in charge in America, he's no longer in charge, thank God. For some reason, I couldn't do fantasy. It's almost as if it was too crazy. But now when things are, you know, not definitely not that all good, but at least back to a sort of normal, it's okay for me to sort of drift off into this other world, if that makes any sense. And so we'll see how things go. I mean, it is a very long book, but I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm in chapter three and each chapter is at least an hour long. And, you know, I, 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 but I found myself actually wanting to sort of sit down and listen to more of it, to get more into it. And my favorite character right now is someone, I love the name, Tachisale. She's a sorceress. And I do like how the women are sort of they're very co-equal with the, the male characters, fighting, you know, doing stuff. The empress is an empress. And um, so that's that's good too. So it's not sort of, you know, even Lord of the Rings, I'm sure it's not like that. I mean, from what I would call. Anyway, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. And I would like to hear about your experiences with him. Well, thank you for 300 subscribers. And I'm a little bit, so funny story here at the end about the cat stuff, the cat videos. Uh, my sister who doesn't, both my sister and my husband are very anti, well, not anti, but they're very like off camera. Don't want to do anything with the internet. Don't want to do anything with YouTube, oh God, why would you, you know, that's how they are, I mean, which is fine, I respect that completely. Uh, and she's like, oh, I watched one of your videos, your cat videos, and I said, which one? And she said, the one where Lily goes outside, <laughs> and I had to laugh because she goes outside in all the videos. And the point I'm going to get to is that at some point the cat tales will probably end. I do think it's sort of a, a series of finite, that it is finite in nature, I mean, We'll see how things go. It's it's. I'll, I'll just I'll I'll make a decision as to how many how many more cat videos, how many more you know <laughs> versions of Liddy going outside can can the world take? On the other hand, you know um, they're fun and they're cute and they're fun to make. And I got the deer the other day, so I was excited about that. Anyway, thank you all for subscribing. I would love to hear what you're reading, 
and um, if you read fantasy or not. I know some people hate fantasy. Um, I think being completely against any type of genre is a little bit, I don't know, um, it could be conceived as a form of, of snobbery, but I mean, we all have our different tastes, so it's fine. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. I hope everyone's doing well, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> you wanted to come in.